What up, y'all? It's your boy Home Team here. I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Y'all already know what it is, man. I'm going to keep it Home Team all day, every day. But today I want to talk about the Ghana Empire. But before I get into that, I got a story for y'all. You know, like I said before, I make different presentations on African history to school kids in the D.C. area. And, you know, one day I was wearing, you know, my African continent chain. And after my presentation, you know, I go and mingle with the kids and stuff like that. So one of the kids came up to me. He was like, yo, I love this chain. Like, this is so cool. What is this, Florida? Now, after I had like a multitude of emotions that arose among me and I was able to cage up my pain, I told him very calmly, I was able to speak. I said, yo, this is not Florida. <laughs> this is not Texas. This is Africa. Guys, this is why I do what I do. But anyway, let's get into it. The Ghana Empire. The Ghana Empire was a part of modern day southeastern Mauritania and western Mali. Now, basically, the Ghana that we know today is not the Ghana Empire of the past. Now, a lot of Akan people in Ghana would be like, Yo, you know, we're the ancestors of the Ghana Empire. Well, that's not, that's not really the case. One scholar in particular, this African scholar, he said, Yo, these European scholars and these Arab scholars were kind of downplayed the territorial region of Ghana. And he sourced this one Arab scholar in the past who said that Ghana was in control of these gold deposits or these gold mines in, you know, most of West Africa. And they pretty much dominated in that region with no competition at all. If this one Arab scholar is true, then Ghana was pretty huge. And that's what this one African scholar is saying about the territorial region of Ghana. And basically the origin of Ghana is not really well known. It's kind of mysterious, but modern day scholars pretty much say that the Sonika people were the originators of the Ghana empire. Now the Sonika people are significant because the Sonika people were one of the first people, or they're believed to be one of the first people, that used iron in that region. Now, because they were able to use iron, they were able to conquer other African groups and incorporate them into the larger Ghana Empire. The unique thing about Ghana was that it was, it was a homegrown society without any influence from Islam in its origin. And that's one of the most special things about Ghana. And it's important to Africa and African history as a whole. These Ghanaian people domesticated camels and were able to trade with people in the Middle East and even in Europe. And they dominated that region and they were able to travel and traverse through the Trans-Saharan region because of this domestication of the camel. And so these Ghanaian people were known for trading their gold for salt and they were so wealthy because they had all the gold deposits and that's one of the reasons why Mali was so rich in gold because it kind of inherited all the gold from the previous dynasty the previous empire in Ghana and so somebody somebody would you know would look at this history and be like yo why in the world would Ghana these Ghanaian people trade gold for salt but we gotta remember, yo, like, without salt, food would be pretty, pretty much lame. And you need salt to survive. So that was a very important thing in, you know, their history and their culture. And it was very smart to trade gold for salt because they had plenty of A lot of what we know about Ghana comes from these Arab scholars and these Arab travelers to that region. Now, these Arab travelers would say, yo, like, on a spot of a dime man like these Ghanaians can call together a military unit of over 200,000 people 40,000 of them being just straight archers and they also had cavalry as well now the Arabs themselves were the first to call that empire or that region Ghana but Ghana is just a title for the king in those regions it, it, it wasn't necessarily the name of you know the empire the indigenous name of that empire was Wagadu. Ghana, like I said, is just a title for the king. And historically, a lot of foreigners who come into Africa, they have a tendency to change up the names or even mistakenly change up the names. Like, for example, 
When the Portuguese went down to Angola and they saw the kings down there were called Angola. And so the Portuguese would say to themselves, oh, okay, this is Angola. And that's how we know of Angola today because of these Portuguese and other foreign travelers that come to Africa and change up the name, just like with the Arabs. So we got to be honest with ourselves. The, the Ghana Empire was overwhelmingly obsessed with gold. And to be honest, you know, they had a good reason to because that's where their wealth came from. And that's how they became such a prolific society because of their gold. And so these Arab scholars and these travelers would look at this and they would say, yo, these Ghanaians have so much gold, man. Like, they would put it on their dogs, on their horses, even on their weapons, like their shields and the swords. And these Negroes would even put it on their hair. And so these Arab scholars were in awe of this. And one Arab traveler in particular, his name was Ibn Hakel. He said, yo, the kings of Ghana are so rich that they have to be the richest and wealthiest dudes on the face of this planet. Now, those are very strong words coming from these Arab travelers and scholars because when they look on the Ghana Empire, they see all this wealth and they see all this land and they see them, these black Africans, succeeding in trade. And these Ghanaian kings would welcome these foreigners, these Arabs, with, with, with open arms. And these Arab travelers would be in awe of this because they were so welcoming. And one of the reasons why these Ghanaians were so welcoming to these Arab travelers is because they were making so much money off these dudes, man. These Ghanaian kings, what they would do is they would tax the heck out of these Arab travelers. They'd be like, okay, you can build your little mosque over here and you can have your people and bring your religion and you can trade with us. But I'm going to tax the heck out of you and you're welcome with open arms. So basically these Ghanaian kings were, was they were pretty slick and you know in what they would do to uh, these Arab travelers and these Arab travelers were in awe of these guys man and they would talk about them frequently and honestly that's one of the reasons for you know the Ghana Empire's downfalls because of all this influence from Islam into the area they kinda let in and over time just like all empires the Ghana Empire fell because the Africans in that area started to embrace Islam and incorporated incorporated it into their philosophy. And one of the theories as to why the Ghana Empire fell is because the Almoravid movement, this Muslim resurrection uh, of Islam in this area, kind of engulfed the Ghana Empire, and that's why you know they say it fell or you know, it was conquered by these Almoravids. And later, the Mali Empire took over. I'm all out for you guys today. And I want you guys to, uh, you know, do some more research. Um, comment, subscribe, get some gold, <laughs> do your thing. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>